Hello. Hello, everyone. Hey. Welcome. Better Call Saul, double episode finale. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, girl. You know what you want? It's coming at you. Jim Oh, yeah. Jim you know what you gotta watch? Miguel. Jim Miguel. You gotta listen to this Jim band called Miguel. Steel Panther. Jim. Steel Have you Panther? Ever heard of them? Steel Panther. Like their music group? Yeah, but okay. it's like they yeah. do like eight crazy like eighties metal. The guy has a kind of like Van Halen y like uh, sound. Like hair metal? Yeah. But mm. it's all like graphic sex stuff. It's insane. The mm. two best songs that I've heard are <laughs> Eatin' Ain't Cheatin'. Which is about a guy who can't stop eating pussy, and don't you know, girl, that sucking ain't fucking, so it's okay. okay. These are lyrics. Right. Lyrics. And the other one is Well, I listen to a lot of hardcore rap, so no, this is shocking No, to I'm me. just saying it's hilarious that it's insane, like, this is what all the songs are just explicitly about. Not like in the 80s when it was all implied, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, here they just outright say, like, with I'm gonna myself, fuck you. Dancing <laughs> and, with myself. it's like all about anal sex, I'm getting in no matter what, like all this kind of stuff. Glory Hole is another good one. Anyway, check it out, it's pretty hilarious. This song's about me jerking off. I never knew that, I never knew that actually. That's more like a folk never knew song. That. <laughs> Dancing with myself. It's about jerking off. What? Dancing with myself, never do it. Wait, dancing with I never, myself? Yeah, with Billy Idol? Never clicked. How's the song go? Dancing oh, with oh, myself. Dancing with myself. Oh, dancing oh. with myself. Oh, and then he goes, ha, oh, ha, oh, oh. ha, <laughs> ha, <laughs> ha, 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 Right? Ha, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God, that's disturbing. <laughs> All right, better call Saul. Well, so Saul. I love this episode because it made me laugh so much. Which it's episode? So, called Fall, la- episode oh, nine, which yes. we're going to start with. Then we'll get to the finale. I yes. thought it was hilarious with the cat cookies, and then he's mall walking, and he had his orthopedic shoes. Did she really believe that he baked those cat cookies? <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, but probably. she doesn't get out much. Yeah. No, the, I was okay. reading online, the reaction online, which I found... I don't understand. We live in a very sensitive culture, but... We live in a cynical world. All the a comments were just like... world. Like, oh, Jimmy's horrible, blah, blah, I can't believe what he I'm is watching. He horrible. And I'm... Yeah, and some people would point out, like, you guys... Have any of you seen Breaking Bad? You yeah. know what Jimmy becomes, yeah. right? He and is like, horrible. That's the point. Yeah, it's he's a character... And that's the whole thing about this show... It's like it's like Game of Thrones. Right. Like sometimes a character you love him, and then he does something. He's an anti-hero so in this, basically. You know, yeah, what I mean? he's Walter White of this thing, and this is people were saying this is his um, poisoning Brock moment, mm. where you do something Walter White like poisoning a kid was like holy shit, and now you see like this grandma who's like the perfect embodiment of everyone's grandma. Yeah. So of course you feel bad. For yeah. What's going on? But you see, you know, especially in the finale, you see how it. He reverses it in a way. For a second, when you said poisoning Brock, I thought you were talking about the Venture Brothers. I was confused for a moment. I was talking about uh, Pokemon. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to watch Pokemon. Fuck. Is that one of Brock's? That's what he wants to do. He wants to breed Pokemon. Oh, oh I thought like Pokemon Fuck was like some game oh, or something. It's the new movie. Hey, Pokemon kids, pick up Pokemon. Fuck. Pokemon! 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 <laughs> You know what I don't get? It. Aren't they still at Sam Piper? Those old people? Yeah, he's yeah. he's visiting them they, at Sam Why Piper. would they stay there? They have this lawsuit against them. Well, that's the whole thing. Uh, I think her name is Lena L- Irene. 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 She's you know it's, she's. Doesn't know the mumbo jumbo of the court proceedings, and basically <laughs> HHM told her to wait. Yeah. And Jimmy, you know, through the montage later, he explains it with peanuts beautifully. How like, hey, look, when he's trying to turn all the women against <laughs> yeah. her, like. Yeah. They're going to get this much, you're going to get this. And he puts like three peanuts. But if you wait a few years, they're going to get this much more, and you'll just get this much more. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah it and it so makes good. sense. What he's doing, he, he needs he's the money. He's wrong. It's true, yeah. And also, he's, I agree with what he's, he's trying exactly. to help them. You're not going to live forever, exactly. ladies. Yeah, That's yeah. what I was thinking. Oh, how old is Irene, do you think? 78? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, late 70s, I kind of early 80s. Take the money. Great actress, by but the way. What are you waiting for? It's funny, because she does remind me, her appearance is very much like my my grandma Irene. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of grandma Irene's. Because <laughs> I've met a few people that have grandma Irene's. Name them. I want names. Irene? <laughs> Get this, Irene too. Hurricane Irene? Anyway. That All doesn't right. make sense to anybody. 
So yeah, it shows Jimmy being Saul. He's doing his Saul, the most Saul thing he could do, uh, and the thing he's going to be known for. The reason why I love him in Breaking Bad, one of my favorite characters in Breaking Bad, was Saul. And yeah, I'm seeing Saul become Saul. I was enjoying it. Yeah, I kind of felt bad for the old lady because he's doing it in a shitty way, but yeah. he's kind of helping her. If you think about it, he's helping all of them. I thought what was going to happen, the big twist was going to be uh, in the finale, when at the end uh, after the bingo game, no one applauds her. Yeah, yeah. I thought. She, because she has that line, I just want everything to go back to the way it was. I thought she was just going to drop the whole lawsuit together instead of getting it settled. Oh. And I, I thought, thought that was going to be a I, I was ha- have expecting her to just drop dead. Oh. Huh. Like she dies. <laughs> and then... Okay, that's another direction to take. <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, though, I was like, wow, it's, it, this is going to happen. Then she's just going to die miserable and sad. All right. And then uh, that whole thing with them finally, with that line, like, because that whole thing going on with Chuck and Howard... Uh, basically, Howard's telling Chuck, hey, look, the male practice has gone up. They have a meeting with the people. Howard kind of says, you know, time to retire, Chuck. And yeah. Chuck is like, what? Uh, uh, Chuck angry. Me, Chuck. Chuck rage. <laughs> Chuck sue. <laughs> and so uh, my and so the big thing is that he, yeah, he starts suing them, which is going to bring down HHM because they don't have the money to do that. And yeah. I thought what was going to happen, she's going to settle. HHM is going to get that money. And was then, he do like nine million dollars or something like that? He Six wants. Yeah, it was like nine million, million bucks or something. Which were you surprised that that would bankrupt them? That they don't have that money? Because that surprised me. Because I think I you'd be. They, I thought that would have been like, oh well, they're going to buy them out, no problem. I think a lot of people would be surprised if you look at the books of a lot of companies you think are really successful yeah, and true. how close to the brink they really are if they have a major fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. But also, we're talking about 2003. Nine million bucks back then was like... <laughs> no, I, yeah, it was like... I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that's like $50 million today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know what my point is there. I, yeah, uh, yeah no, I don't know. But that, that did catch me off guard. I, I just thought, oh, I, I just thought they had way more money than that. I don't know why. Hmm. By the way, if you hear weird sounds, listeners, I just Fox got a... an artist farting. <laughs> I got a new mic arm thing. So I'm like moving it around. This is kind of like a test. Shouldn't creak and it's perfectly balanced. I like it. It's cool. Good for you. I'm not you using my wind guard. I'll say that. Yes. Thanks. Like yeah. a radio shock yeah, you jock. Look good. Yeah. Just Yo, what's up? Seattle. <laughs> Rock on. This is Oxnard in the morning playing the hits. Benny. Ah, is it time for the radio? You got to do all kinds of cartoon, Family Guy and Simpsons and South Park clips. You know what I should? Peppered I should order. Your you intro. know, like Howard Stern. They have like the megaphone when they want to pretend someone's on the phone. <laughs> yeah, I should get like one of those first. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make prank calls. I should get like you know, uh, like a call bell, ding ding, <laughs> just goofy sound effects. You look exactly like Imus. I gotta say, Arr, you've been better. You've been I was better. More. Or some type of reptile. About, uh, you guys like my hat? Madrigal electromotive. Yeah, so let's talk about Mike, because Mike absent in the finale. Yes, notably. Yeah. So we have this scene with Mike meeting with Lydia at this German-owned corporation. Madrigal. That we've seen in Breaking Bad later on. Yeah. They're an importer-exporter? <laughs> like George. What are they George, importing? One of George Elect- Costanza's it lies. It says electromotive. Okay. One guy pointed out online that if you look at the map, you see a lot of arrows going yes. to the Czech Republic or oh, something. Really? Uh, it's it was some place that um, Lydia and Breaking like Bad was talking to Walt about getting into the market in the Czech Republic or Slovakia. Oh, okay. Because they had a lot of ties there. It's just a little detail in the background to show like, just like the connection. Those Slavs, they're craving crystal meth. And the great thing about that Mike I scene, if, if they were pissed off. You see Mike's like trepidations handing over his yeah. information. Yeah, exactly. No, yeah, understandably. And that, you know, the episode's called Fall. That's Mike's first step into his massive fall, just giving that information over yeah. and being part of this bigger system. Basically, he just signed, when he starts signing it, you're like, well, he just signed his life over to Frank, basically. He signed it away. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah, you can't what do. <laughs> Wait, oh, so I have a question for you. Because mm-hmm. I was talking about this uh, with some family members, and I co- none of us could quite remember where did Mike get all of this money. Did we talk about this? Because he's got what two hundred something grand. Now I have a va- I know he didn't make all of that since he's come out to New Mexico, but I, and I do have a vague memory of the maybe the first episode of the first season. Well, this season where he shows up with a bag, and doesn't he have a bag of money? 
He had, had escaped. He had killed the cops that killed his son. Oh, yeah, he right? did have a bag of money. And he had been injured himself, and that's how he hooks up with that vet. But didn't he have a bag of money or something? I, I'm trying to yeah. remember yes. how he got this fucking money. He got $200,000 he acquired from the f- his first heist. What was the first heist? Oh! With the with the treasurer, you mean? With yes. Jimmy? Yes. Right? Because <laughs> the guy... It was a he, heist. he stole like a million dollars or a million plus dollars, right? Oh, right, That yeah. treasury guy... Right, right, right. And that's where Mike's, he's staking out the house, eating all those crab apples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Crunch, crunch, crunch. I'm eating apples. Listening to baseball. My AM. You have a little remote control car, right? Yeah, in the backyard. Oh, yes, that's right. All right. That's where you got it. All right, cool. Thanks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, was there anything else with Mike? I think that was it. That's it. That might have been it. Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. And then... You know what I'll say? Um, <laughs> after this episode and uh, the finale, the season finale, Howard has solidified himself as one of my favorite characters. Oh, Maybe yeah. He's my really favorite good. character. <laughs> I love Howard. I mean, I always liked him because that character... Is so annoying, but in a really good way. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Did you and watch? Uh, a great job. Did He's you watch uh, Talking Saul? No, I don't watch that. No, I watched a little. He was on it, and they yeah. also got um, Mike McKean. Michael McKean. Michael McKean. You know Michael McKean. And uh, the guy who played <laughs> the guy who played Nacho. He was on there too. Yeah. Uh, but they were talking about that with uh, Elliot Gould. Uh, how like when Howard was introduced, you're meant to see him a certain Elliot way. Elliot Gould. No, who's the guy Gould? <laughs> Elliot Gould. Not is, Elliot uh, Gould. From Mash and uh, no, the Oceans, the Oceans movies. The, he directed the episode. Peter Gould, right? Peter Gould, yes. <laughs> Elliot Gould. Been watching Mash nonstop. Who <laughs> <laughs> shot over the sea of Japan? There were no survivors. <laughs> um, well, what were they saying though? Just, yeah, when Howard's introduced, you immediately have an idea of him. And that's what the show yeah. does so well. It's, even with Nacho, too. The minute you meet Nacho, it's like, who's this thug? Yeah. And both characters, you realize how There's human they are. You start peeling away the layers. And, For example, yes. Howard, he drives his nice Jaguar, his mm-hmm. Jaguar, and he pulls up into the parking lot before uh, Jimmy, you know, meets him to talk about the, the Sandpiper thing and that they have to settle and all this stuff. And... Uh, Howard's listening to like some kind of bossa nova jazz or something like that. It was great. I was like, some yes, mu- Muzak? Howard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what Muzak is? Yeah, I worked in a mall. Oh man, I, I worked retail. Boss, for a you long know what time. Muzak is? Uh-uh. <laughs> it's like commercial-free blends. It's a service. Retail it's like store. a music service, but for like stores. Mm. And... Imagine that's your career. Like, what do you do? Make the most bland music I make music ever. Playlists. <laughs> have you ever been on the? <laughs> have you been on Thirty uh, Fourth Street going up the elevator? That was me. <laughs> you know, then Christmas time music is that's that's the nightmare. Fa la 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 la. By our it shit. It starts in October. No joke. Hmm. Before Halloween. Before Halloween. One year I remember it starting before Halloween, like. Oh, close to Halloween, but before. I would have complained. Like, and it was end of October <laughs> it started. And I was like, what the fuck? Oh, God, it was awful. Hmm. And it was the worst... <laughs> the worst one was the Paul McCartney one. Simply having a wonderful Christmas time. Copyright Simply strike on YouTube. We've lost everything. I wrote this song while on the John. <laughs> I didn't care. Just wanted to get paid. <laughs> Simply getting paid for shitty music that plays all the time. <laughs> Horrible. La, 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 la. Horrible. <laughs> Kim. Don, anyway. Ding, ding, dong, my dong, ding, dings. <laughs> my dong. <laughs> Kim is meeting with the Gatwood oil guy. Yeah, I noticed her eyes look a little, like, uh, sunken in, like she's tired, actually. Well, oh, yes. Oh, guess as to why. Mm-hmm. She's re- you know, that's a great... A lot of sex. That's a great... <laughs> that girl looks tired. Must be all the sex she's having. Must be all Fuck the yeah, jerk off to her. her. <laughs> yeah, look at those oil 
things oh, pumping. Man. Look at yeah. pump. Nice, subtle, subliminal message. He's shaking her hand. He's like, this yep, scene was I'm nuts. I'm going to get you in the sack later. You were looking at my heel oil drills. <laughs> Yeah, look at her earrings. They're all triangles. Three points. Three holes. Ooh. Am I right? Ooh. Right? This is a... Guys? This scene was crazy <laughs> with the car, and she almost hits this thing. Oh, my God. No, but boss, that's a great uh, detail that I didn't pick up on until rewatching it now. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and I'm glad you mentioned that because, yeah, well, that's such, that's such a minor thing, but they paid attention to that. Oh, yeah. And wasn't there another episode where she kind of went into a micro-sleep while driving? Oh, I don't remember. Didn't don't that happen like that. a season ago or something, or earlier in the season? I seem to remember some part where she kind of like zoned out a little bit in the car, and they held on it for a little too long, and then it cut to something else. The one thing before, uh, the one thing before his boss mentioned where the, she almost loses the car and it drives into the, the drill, the oil rig thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, she doesn't try and go in reverse at all. She just tries to go forward. Why don't you try and back up? What would your brake work? Oh, I guess. Oh, what? she doesn't try to go. <laughs> Wouldn't your oh, brake work? I, no, 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 no. I, get, no, I, I guess I, the I brake would work. About. Yeah, yeah, you're right. She doesn't like, try to go ba- backwards. When, you know, when your car's in the snow and you're pulling out of a snowy spot after a storm or whatever. Yeah. You kind of I go back, go forward. Go back. Well, Dexter, you know. Go forward. She's a lawyer. She's a lady. Oh, she's a lawyer. What, That's Dexter? The problem. Oh, yeah, what the what's wrong fuck? with you? Oh! Whoa, no, trigger I singing, warning. Wow, I was just singing that song. Misogynistic. That, she's a lady. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wow. Look, we're not going to take that on the SJW yeah, podcast no here. SJW? Social see, see Justice I baited him Warrior? Into that? Oh, is that what it is? is yeah, that, isn't it? Me. Played him like a fiddle. Triggered. The Dexter went down. I actually ordered a violin recently. I'm going to try and learn it. Good for you. It's really hard. <laughs> yes. I was trying to teach myself piano, and my mother-in-law had a piano, and I was learning on that, and then she sold it, and I was getting pretty good. <laughs> you got a nice and, little uh, cheap synthesizer. Yeah, I want to get a, a keyboard now. They sell pretty good cheap ones. connects right to your PC, and then you can... Really? Yeah, they're all like USB and electronic. Look it you up. You know I'm going to do that? I'll record my music, and we'll put it on the show. Put well, you can make like remixes. So you can hear how great I am. You can take recordings of us and make remixes of like goofy things we like say. Like Gene in Buzz Burgers? <laughs> yeah. Fart, 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 yeah. fart, fart, Guys, fart. Guys, let me sample we'll your do farts. Do a D&D, a D&D uh, song music set, sound nice. set. Hello, yeah. I'm Dexter. D- the Dexter. Hello, I'm Oxnard. O- o- Oxnard. Oxnard. Boss. 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 And then Sounds you go like I don't there. need the keyboard. You, awesome. just, you just freestyle it. Do that. All right. Fine. Do an STS dubstep. Would you? Sure. I can send you those clips You'll I recorded. You'll be waiting for that beat to drop the whole time, and it's mm. never going to happen. A few, uh, a few months ago, for whatever reason, I went to a translation website, and I recorded a woman Fucking. saying, uh, you are listening to STS Enterprises in like every language. No Ooh. idea if they're accurate, but... Yeah, how would you know if it's right in Japanese? I don't know, but I'll make a, something out of it. I'll just sprinkle them in. Just play them all at the same time, all at once. I'm going to put them in this. Oh, that sounds like all right, Oxnard, no, just throw them in randomly. Right. Oh, my God, it's SES Enterprises. Estás escuchando STS Enterprises con Dexter, Oxnard y vos. I'll put, like, a bit of music there. Yeah. This is going to be, like, the coolest discussion of Better Call Saul oh, ever. Oh, yeah, so cool. <laughs> All right, so uh, Jimmy goes to Howard. Well, the thing with Kim is uh, you can see she's kind of losing. She's falling. Yes, exactly. Falling asleep. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Nice one. Jimmy meets up with (laughs) Howard. (laughs) Jimmy meets up with Howard, and he's telling them, hey, look, you got to settle this. How much? Because he does the calculations after talking to Irene, and he stands to make, what was it, 1.2 million or something? He makes 1.2 million? Jimmy will make, yeah, somewhere. Or they will. No, Jimmy will make somewhere somewhere close to 1.5. I I thought that was the It was some ridiculous amount, yeah. Yeah. And Howard calls him out. He calls him Gollum, Lord of the Rings reference. Yes. Yeah, he does. It's weird. you're there like Gollum. You're like Gollum. Now I'm over here. Now I'm over there. <laughs> Gollum, Smeagol, who am I talking to, Jimmy? I thought I thought Howard justifiably uh, shit all over Jimmy there. Oh, uh, yeah. Put him in his place, and I thought it was great. And Jimmy's like, God damn it. He knows that he's acting, you know, really, like, shitty. But at the same time, like, 
I feel for Jimmy because he's desperate. What are you going to do? I would. I, what would I do if I was in that situation? I had like one point five million dollars coming my way. All that's standing in my way is that this old lady won't. You know, doesn't understand mm-hmm. all the the stuff that's going on. She doesn't understand the language and the lawyers that are helping her is that girl Erin, who who I hate. Uh, you know what I mean from the old law firm. Dave Wasn't that the one you were attracted to? No, I'm saying I'm Jimmy and I hate her. I'm oh, saying, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I thought she was cute. Not so much when I saw her again, though. <laughs> All right. He cooled on her. <laughs> it's been too long. Another thrilling update from SGS Enterprises. Hit it! Sie hören STS Enterprises mit Dexter, Oxnard und Boss. I thought she was kind of cute when we first saw her. Pretty sure I changed my tune, though, once she started to display her personality. Yeah, fuck her. Let's move on. All right. Frank and <laughs> Salamanca. Anyway, oh yes. Have a little phone conference with uh, uh, Don Eladio's uh, buddy, who speaks for him, and they want to have uh, everything go through the Chicken Man. Yes, the Chicken Man is going to be in one. charge, going in and out, right. just more secure. That's right. And uh, he you freaks s- out. You see, uh, Salamanca almost has that stroke or whatever it's going to be, and, uh, you know, just... Now, I, I don't understand what happened. Was it like a placebo effect? Because Salamanca yeah. takes yeah, the pill so. and nothing happens. I think so, yeah. So I think this one wasn't that serious, and it was like a placebo effect took over, I think and uh, it was fine. Because Nacho's like, the fuck? I think a lot of medical things where you're prone to, like, an attack at some time, I think anxiety and stress really makes it worse. Mm-hmm. Because with asthma, too. Remember in Lost when, uh, what's her name, got asthma, and she didn't have Shannon. her inhaler? Shannon. 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 And then Jack's like, look, a lot of it's anxiety, Shannon. <sighs> I'm Jack. Always I'm out, out of breath. breath. all the time. <laughs> but Shannon, you gotta remember, just breathe. You gotta get Sawyer, get those inhalers. What's that, Doc? What's that? Yeah. Freckles. You think I got inhalers? <laughs> yeah. I show them all up my butt. It's my favorite area. <laughs> to shove things in. <laughs> Excellent, Sawyer. Lost. <laughs> dude. Dude, it's me, Hurley. Dude. Others. I just throw all the characters. Bolt. Bo- <laughs> um, sea urchin. Heroin. Claire. Bye, baby. Not Penny's boat. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> and that was Lost, brought to you by SES Enterprises. Don't you tell me what I never can't do. Don't you tell me what I never can't do. I'm very confused. What should I be doing, John? All right. So Jimmy goes to the mall. <laughs> sit in the corner, I guess, and think about it. He has those Kim Kardashian whatever bullshit things that were proven to be a complete scam, and they had to shut down the company. Remember those what? shoes? Butt implants? No, yeah, the butt implants. Oh, uh, Skechers Shape Ups? Yeah, it wasn't Kardashian. Was it? I don't know. I remember something. Joe Montana was involved, wasn't he? Did well, he they did a him? scientific study, I believe, and they were proven to not do anything, and the company couldn't make any claims. <laughs> They're just claims. crummy-looking mm-hmm. shoes. Yeah, just stupid things. Just don't buy into anything, people. <laughs> yep, Jimmy. This has been Oxnard's Truth of the Week. <laughs> <laughs> don't believe anything. Jimmy's wall walking, and he, you know, he sees the senior ladies, and he talks about his plantar fasciitis acting up. Yeah. And he shows his sweet shoes. Oh yeah, like walking <laughs> on clouds. <laughs> They're hilarious. They are hideous looking shoes. <laughs> so they how much? Look- very uncomfortable. <laughs> Yeah, now he, he opens the trunk and he had a bunch of shoes in there. He had every size. And when I saw it, I was confused because I thought it was broke. But I guess he got money from the, the twins at the guitar store, right? That's where he got yeah, some money I from? I guess he didn't give it all I'm assuming to him. he has some money. Right. Now, yeah. also, he, uh, my thinking was, well, he can just return the shoes, right? Uh, oh, well, yeah, okay. he said there's no return yeah, policy, well, Dexter. That's bullshit. What? What are you talking about? Because he bought... Also... How many different, like, sizes could her feet possibly be? She's a little old there lady. There were a lot of sizes. There were a lot of sizes. Have you ever seen old lady feet? Pray <laughs> no, you never do. <laughs> they could come in any variety. You never know what to... One could be a nine and the other's a 29. <laughs> Some size that doesn't even exist. Yeah, it's double wide, size four. Like, this could be a freak show. Oxnard's grandma has fucked up feet, is my guess here. <laughs> I've worked in a lot of old lady places. So, <laughs> so I'll a lot say. of old lady shoes. <laughs> well, then he basically succeeds in alienating 
Irene from her friends, from all her friends, uh, and and then at bingo, Jimmy's back at bingo. There oh, it was man. hilarious, yeah, it was and he hilarious. rigs the game. Oh, yeah, he injects a metallic liquid in there and spins yeah. it around so that he can utilize yeah. a mag. Where was the magnet on the thing? It was in the tube. Okay, so that when the ball came up, I guess it was like it got stuck <laughs> to the magnet. <laughs> Science. Brilliantly put. Here's one of the saddest shots. Started to get distracted halfway through that sentence. TV history when Irene's walking and all their friends ignore her. It's very sad. It is sad. It's very sad. Heartbreaking. She yeah. has her cat sweater on. <laughs> exactly. What are her cat's names again? Puss in Boots? No, something... No. Something different. Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't remember. Uh... All right, then oh, we have man. this great scene with Nacho and his father. That was uh This has one of the, one best, of the best scenes. Lines and this just shows how great the writers are. He just says like I'm working for Salamanca again. Yeah. And just that one little line so simple but immediately gives you All so much emotion. exposition. Yeah. So they, there's a history there, the father knows he's part of it. Yeah. So the you know, it just immediately sets everything up perfectly. You can see it's it, great. Yeah, and and everything like you said, I'm, I mean, there's not much more I can say. <laughs> perfectly. No, okay. but w- w- the other thing I was thinking of was, uh, you know, you can see that their relationship is in a good place. You, before he says that, you're like, oh, wow, they're close. They have a loving relationship, you know, um, yeah. all this stuff. And then and also, he I think- says that again, it's like it completely changes. And then you feel like, oh, man, all that work and stuff that headway that had been made to come back yeah. to where they were all washed away. And they could have easily had the father like start yelling at him or, or scream at him, but it's just pure disappointment. I love the guy that plays yeah. Nacho's dad. And I think it's they fantastic. made him drink milk on purpose just so like, like a little boy. he's a little boy and the father seemed like his baby. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I th- this scene was so really, everything so about it was, was good. Yeah, that's a great point. Because I was like, why is he drinking milk? But that makes perfect sense and he's just like a little kid again and his father is disappointed in him. yeah and i was i was yeah. waiting for the father to like kind of like ah! well he was like you can <laughs> scream at me do whatever you want but you have to you have to do this mm. and that's just the way it is and then in the finale the next that, that was another great scene oh yeah um let's see let's wrap this up here with the father yeah all right, so back to Howard. He gets a letter. What was this letter? <laughs> I don't remember. Oh, was, he's being sued. That's right. Okay. He thinks that it's. He thinks it, the he, Howard thinks that the letter is Chuck's resignation. Right. It was such a massive plot point that I yeah, forgot what it was. Like, uh, that's great. Let's uh, find a wonderful place. We're going to set up a party. Um, How much do you know, think they're going to spend on this party? This retirement party. <laughs> Oh, I don't know, a hundred grand, probably. Really? Sure. Damn. What? Holy shit. Well, they're gonna have. It's gonna be everybody there. How many people do you think are there? A thousand employees. HHM. No way. I don't think it's a, it really. That was a big crowd. Did you see in the finale when he leaves and Chuck leaves? All the people there. That wasn't a thousand people. Uh, Five hundred. A million. <laughs> Two hundred. It was the biggest crowd. <laughs> that had Ever witnessed a Chuck retiring. <laughs> the biggest one ever in history. Tremendous. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I love Howard's reaction. Is like, this motherfucker. And so finally Howard goes back, talk to Chuck about her, and he notices Chuck has put on all the lights and blah, blah, Everything seems to be normal. Chuck's trying to make the case like, look, nothing's wrong with me. Yeah. Trying to throw me out, bitch. Well, Chuck's lying to everybody about nothing's wrong with him, including himself, big time. Yeah, so uh, McKeon, he was on... Um, Talking Soul. Mm-hmm. Call it Better Talk Soul. Are they this stupid? Yes, they are. Fucking <laughs> rid- Better Talk Soul you know flows what? so yeah, fucking well. Has reg- Chris Hardwick has a regular show, like a late night show on there now. You know what that's called? Talking. <laughs> they couldn't say, like, oh the my Chris God. Hardwick show? I only watch it because I'm... Some shit. I watched it because I wanted to see the actor. So, but man, uh, yeah, something about Hardwick, he just annoys me. Yeah, and I feel like we're being should like, I cut that out? dicks now because and no, obviously we're not. he's doing something right because he's, he's very sucked. successful. And maybe and I don't know. We are is here he, in is a he, basement on a YouTube channel 
<laughs> There's a duct tape all over this microphone. <laughs> hey, I got to hold it to uh, that yeah. camera tripod. It's not even meant for a microphone. So, I mean, there's something to be said about us, you know, and him. But at the same time, it doesn't matter. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get how his popularity. Yeah, and I'm sure he's a nice guy. I'm sure if I'm... I don't, I don't so. hate him as a person. I don't think so. I think he's I just a shit. Don't, I think <laughs> he's a shit. He's a shit. Um, but it just seemed like when he was talking... He, he was like, he was going, blah, blah, blah. he was talking like how I do here. It was like too much, like, slow down, like, com- get your you thoughts know, you together. You know what he does, too? He does what I do all the time. There's a good conversation going. Everything's real funny. Then he makes a joke and everything dies. Oh, he's one of those. Yeah. He's that's the missile. What, that's how I perceive it. That's usually He's the happens. bomber. And Yeah. And everybody's <laughs> kind of like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah you're yeah, the host. Yeah, I forgot. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. I don't know. That's... Yeah. That's always the impression that I got. That's always at least how it feels to me. Did you ever watch At Midnight? I can't watch that show. Uh, no. I wanted to start watching that, that stand-up show that Showtime show's doing. It's about stand-up comedy in the 70s or oh, 80s. Oh, yeah. But I've heard bad things like it was trying too hard or something. I, I thought that would be a really good premise, like stand-up comedy. Anyway, McKeon was on Talking Saul, and he was saying how Chuck, his take on Chuck is that he's just so unaware of himself, mm. and that's how he can easily just lose his mind and because he's not a – he's too – He explained it more eloquently than I could, but he had a good take on it. It was funny because you can tell he was on a satellite feed, but he was sitting in his bathroom. (laughs) (laughs) It was funny. And then he was making a joke like, oh, I need more paper in here. (laughs) He's hilarious. Yeah, he's a funny guy. Oh, man. Every time I I find that... uh, He had a full beer, too. Really? Yeah. Oh, I got to check that out. I I basically found uh, after Mm -hmm. watching Chuck Heavy episodes of Saul, I just want, want to watch Spinal Tap. Hmm. Or uh, like Best in Show or A Mighty Wind or something. Best in Show is great. Because I watched it again. He's so uh, good in that. A few weeks ago, I watched it again. It was oh, on. That's a fantastic yeah. one. Yeah. All right. Let's see. I think, I think this. Just go to the end. We... Well, the end is the big, big finish, which is another yeah. testament to the editing of this show. Ooh. All right. So Irene gets sad because no one cheered her. Bingo. Words gone around. Jimmy says his line. He says it perfectly because he's not supposed to give legal counsel. He just says like, "Do what's in your heart." Yeah. Wink. All right, so the last scene we see Kim, you know, she's getting all the work papers together. Basically, her case is going to be, what was it going to be? Like, I'm going to give you a percentage of oh, the oil no. so that... They're making a deal with these other companies. Um, with the government. Basically, I no, I thought yeah, it's it was like another, the whole thing is no. going to get taxed. The whole no. thing is going to get taxed. That's the thing. I think they're <laughs> Don't making... wag your finger at me. <laughs> <laughs> I think the other companies were saying that he, that he took their oil... And at least this is what I got. It. Well, the pocket of oil goes they, underneath. Right. They're it's across saying, state lines. That's, I know. That's yeah. what I'm saying. The other companies are saying <laughs> that, that he took their oil, but instead of him actually taking oil from another state, they're going to say he's going to give him like a... Uh, on the barrel. Percentage give on the barrel. Price on the barrel. Right. <laughs> so that... I, I thought so that it's the government it. though. It's the government oh, okay. because it's crossing state lines and it's a tax issue that they were talking about. So instead of like it would be, uh, I thought it was a meeting with other companies. I don't know. I'm pretty sure that the government was involved. It's not it important. Might have been both. It's not that important. The point no, is no, like no. Oh, we're Kim. Settle this. <laughs> we could just rewatch yeah, it, but right, no. uh, Kim, she's putting together all these binders because a lot of people representatives are going to be showing up. She needs to make this presentation. She's gotten, I think, in the finale, she says like in the past week, she's gotten like six weeks. I mean, six hours of sleep? <laughs> six weeks of sleep. Six weeks of sleep. The most boring That's movie so ever made. Rested. <laughs> Starring Kim from that show you watched. Or did you? For six weeks. Um, and so she's going crazy. Francesca, that's her name? Francesca. Francesca, she's Francesca. helping her out. Jimmy shows up with the... Francesca, Fran- right? Oh, yeah, with a uh, little tequila. Yeah. That's what a lot of people were saying after she had the tequila. There was like a pause there, and they thought they were going to set up like they did it. <laughs> they just lunge at it. <laughs> a I sip thought, of tequila. I thought it was going to happen, too, but no, they um, Yeah, so Jimmy has that bottle of tequila. The same brand that uh, Gus Fring brings to Mexico in Breaking Bad to poison everybody. Is that right? Yeah, and it's also... I was trying to figure... I was Because I saw the name, I was like, this is a weird tequila. What's the significance behind it? And I thought it was something that... Was this what Kim and Saul were drinking at when the they, club that one time? When they, when they scammed they, that yeah, guy. when they scammed the guy. Okay. But I didn't realize the... Uh, oh, wow, that's interesting. The fring poisoning. Thing. Well, the second I saw that, I think it's like in American Beauty. Every time you see a red door or something red, something major is about to happen. Mm-hmm. Same in The Godfather when you see oranges... With the yeah, color orange. Right. Uh, so every time I see that tequila bottle, bottle, I was like, oh, God. Then they cut the Kim, 
And I, I was like, they're going to kill Kim. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a... Uh, uh, Peter Gould said, um, I think in an interview, that the original idea for this, it was going to end right when she crashed and just go to credits. Mm. But he thought that would be cheating the yes. audience. Yeah. And I was like, that's so awesome of them. Right. Because if it was Walking Dead, oh, yeah. it's oh, just like it. a massive fuck you. No. Then it would be five episodes not yeah. right. knowing what's going it's on. Like, well, uh, or then, uh, yeah, and then if they did die or something, or uh, it would be five episodes of Daryl brooding yeah. about something unrelated uh-huh be flashback episodes yeah, oh. so yeah exactly hold on i wanted to see that cut again let's see what happened let's do two episodes of what happened 15 years before and you can see this is so they held it so perfectly it's, in the yeah. editing it's so jarring and it's right she's tilting her head she's just zoning out and people who have fallen asleep at the wheel, they were saying online, like, that's exactly what it feels like. It's like, you don't even realize it's happening, and the next thing you realize, like, you're on the side of the road, or you're in a yeah, massive see. accident. See, and now, <laughs> when they have the long pause, and Kim's just driving along, I was like, man, she's gonna get hit by a fucking car. Mm-hmm. And I was just waiting for it. But then, again, I was, so I knew something like this was gonna happen, but it was so jarring, because... <clears throat> but it was so jarring, because I did not expect it to be edited that way Mm -hmm. and i just didn't see coming like this where she almost like basically goes flying off a cliff yeah um and uh it was so intense the suddenness of it and like you said it was so real and that shot like wow that's fantastic they were holding it was coming but it's i knew something weird was gonna happen also they were holding on the driver's side window so long that i thought like you were just gonna see a truck out of nowhere heading right towards her and then it was gonna cut oh my god (laughs) Yeah, but well, look at that, yo, almost off a cliff. In the finale, I was like, because, uh, you know, so Kim's in the hospital, Jimmy shows up, um, and uh, their relationship had been kind of, like, strained, I think. I always felt like they seemed kind of distant from each other. Their and relationship... I think the money thing was taking a toll. I mean, that's why, and they talk about it, and Jimmy feels bad about it, because she was working herself... It's, it's one of the so most uh, like it's one of the most unique relationships I think I've ever seen on a show where it's like you can tell they like each other. They're not they lovers. They're romantic. They're romantic. But... It's almost like friends with benefits, but that's where it stops, but they help each other, but they care about each other. And there's not that many benefits. Like you don't see them like No, they're not smooching. They're not like friends with benefits is like a romantic comedy thing. It's not even like that. It's for No, all yeah. You know, they like... just bang every night. They they might. <laughs> That's the thing, they might, but it might just be like a clinical thing, yeah. like, hey, we both, you know, it's the end of the day, just get this, you know, let's get this out of our systems. And you know then... what it is? They have, like, a nice kind of normal relationship. It's television. a very enviable relationship, no, it isn't is. it? <laughs> it is. No, but I mean... She's really like... good at her job. She's making in, good money. <laughs> in TV shows, you know, like, uh, it's like, when do they ever get anything done? Because they all they do is spend every, like, waking moment with one another. They're hmm. constantly thinking about one another. In TV shows and stuff, they go so over the top with um, with romances sometimes. Um, yeah. And it becomes so intense. Like, they didn't do it. Theirs just seems like a, a normal it relationship. Seems, to it seems so real that yeah. you hardly even think about it. Exactly. It's just like, yeah. You know? Um, and uh, one of the things that I thought was like, I felt bad for Jimmy, but I was like, it, it was like really, really sweet. Is he's out there in like the pitch dark picking up all the papers. Yeah, yeah after accident. And picking up all the work. And I was like, oh man, that was, uh, I don't know. It was, it was kind of a touching moment to me. Well, let, now let's talk about the finale. It's called Lantern. Did you know that this was, that this kid I was did. Chuck speaking immediately? Because I could tell right away. I, I did. Like, yes. This kid fucking yeah, nailed it. He sounds it. like exactly. him. Exactly. And he looks like him. I was like, they either 80 yard something, I or this know. kid is just, this kid did a perfect job. Like a good person. I thought it was the father, but as it got closer, and even the, his face looks yeah, like him. Yeah, he looked yeah. like him. Like, I wonder if they put an effect on him or something. I think maybe they did. Because that looks like a young. Maybe it's his son. He looks too much like him. Maybe. I don't know. In Look, life, and did you notice this? It's a falling mug. Just like at the end of the episode, a falling gas lantern. Whoa! Oh. See that? Do you see that? Oh. My God! Vince Gilligan, man. <laughs> he could never make anything good. Sure you could. You just have to slave over you it and to... <laughs> do every detail and, and go man, over everything. Oh, man. 
And you follow, you surround yourself with a team of like really experienced, smart people. What I found interesting too was I was like, oh, that's how they put a cast on. <laughs> yeah, I never thought about it. Really, you never made like a paper mache thing in like middle school or I grade school. Do, but I don't remember. And never yeah, you, on somebody's arm. You take like strips, you dip it in like Elmer's yeah. glue. Or, I'm sure they're not why, using Elmer's I just glue. Never but... thought about like, oh yeah, that's actually what it is. Yeah, you make like your frame out of cardboard. I don't like to talk about it anymore. That's right. That's right. I was there. Wah, 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 wah. Oh, man, that's so mysterious. <laughs> Tonight on The Twilight Zone, boss. Paper mache. Paper mache. Yeah, buddy. Paper mache. <laughs> A simple class. <laughs> arts and crafts. Little does he know that when the clock strikes three, he'll be entering The Twilight the Zone. The Twilight dun, 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 dun. He just wanted to take a life drawing class. The scary door. <laughs> the scary door. <laughs> All right, so what do you want to talk about? Finale. Talk well, about anything. I just mentioned that one part where he's picking up. That was the very Gosh. beginning of the episode, basically. Mm-hmm. And then moving on. <laughs> um, no Mike. No Mike. The lawsuit. Oh, All I right. loved the shots in the uh, conference room. Every th- shot Chuck in here? is uh, suing. I just thought. Not every all shot. All the shots. The uh, Remind me of Kubrick. Yes, especially when, exactly when right. Chuck is in his manner destroying it. Yes. I got a lot of Kubrick, especially with the music yes. and the madness. That scene was so intense. For me, I was like, "Oh my god!" It was hard to watch because you're watching this this really, really smart guy, and uh, I just have a complete meltdown. Mm-hmm. And and that was a thing because you could see he's even the one doctor uh, in a previous episode, you know, because in, in the one before this one, he's saying, "Oh, see, look how be- much better I am," and he's holding the light, and Howard goes to the house, and he's cooking, and he's got the lights on, and then you see he's like. When Howard leaves, he's like, ah, and he turns the light off, and he's like, Hoo, like shaking it out, and he does his weird mantra thing, you know, to help distract him, where he's like, you know, a brown table, uh, you know what I mean, a gold watch, uh, and he starts focusing, trying to focus on something yeah, else. Yeah, you know that's... But it can't, he's pushing himself too hard, and even the doctor says yeah. that to him in the one episode. And you know it's getting bad when, even in the comfort of his own house in his own bed, he has to start doing the exercises to, like... Yeah, that, that's and he has the really log. bad. He keeps such a meticulous journal, and then before he starts to have that meltdown, he basically says like oh, "fuck it," and he doesn't write anymore. And yeah, he, then and he that goes all down comes and he switches everything off. And that all comes after that. Uh, oh my crazy God. scene, insane scene where with Jimmy. It started with like Jimmy in the car, and he's just out there. He's trying to build up. I don't know, he's just trying to make sense, like, should I go in and say hi to Chuck? He just wants to make sure Chuck is alive. Yeah. And he is, and he lets Jimmy in. Proof of life. And they have this long talk. Everything's on, too. And Jimmy has always said to him, like... Yeah, that's before the... Was it yeah, season exactly. one or two? No, I, uh, I think season two, after Chuck, remember, he passed out in the printing thing, and he's in the hospital. Right. And then Jimmy even says, like, can we just stop all... Can we just be brothers? Yeah. And he's, you know, he's pouring his heart out. To Chuck, in a sense, saying, like, uh... Oh. Sorry, my smart TV is giving me pointless information. Uh... Twitter app! (laughs) Oh, damn it! Not on my Samsung. Uh... He says, can we just be brothers? And he's kind of saying similar things here. And then Chuck has that line, which is basically... You know, he he says to Jimmy, like, like, everything... Don't apologize. You are who you are. Yeah, why do you have regrets? You've always been like slipping Jimmy, basically. He says, you basically never mattered to me. All you're going to well, do that, is... Well, it leads up well, to that. that's what it leads up to. But he's saying, like, you're... Just jump, and, always just jump right to it, boss. He basically says <laughs> this. Well, you just talked <laughs> about the episode. end already. Here's the, <laughs> no, but I was trying to... I was, to, I was, I was trying... You started with what happened, and then you started... But what I tried... Chuck might have killed himself. Oh, jump right to it, boss. I try to talk through the scene because I had thoughts when I was watching it, so if I talk through it, I'll remember what I was thinking. But he starts saying, like, everything you're involved with uh, Jimmy, you destroy, and that's just the way right. you are. You tear everything out. Chuck's the same people. exact way. Yes, and so, but that's what the thing. Like Chuck is not self-aware. He's not aware of what he's doing. He just right. just jealousy, whatever bizarre problem. And, and then, then he says, "Yes, boss." That uh, I forget. You've never, <laughs> really, mad- you've never <laughs> I really mattered that much to me. Yes. And then Jimmy's like blown away, mm. and he almost is gonna like turn around and say something else. Either either something to like. I don't even think it was going to be something nasty. I think it was going to be like, you know, Chuck, you know, you don't mean that. Honestly, like, like what could you say? Uh, you can't say anything. And that's it's why like I nothing to say. Yeah. And then Chuck is just sitting there. Uh, and then that's it slowly begins. Then we, you know, go to the meltdown we talked about. 
And all, the one thing I kept thinking of with the lights on and everything, and you finally really see the house, I was like, this house is fucking awesome. It's a beautiful house. It's a beautiful house. Yeah, Peter Gould was saying, like, because on the set, like, uh, McKeon was, he he didn't have a stunt double. He was doing it over and over, bashing them. And so the art uh, art department had to keep bringing in. They had, like, 20 versions of, like, walls oh and every take. And they were there for, like, 10 hours for a day. Oh, my God. And he was saying, Peter Gould was saying as he was directing them, because McKeon, like, gets into the character a lot. So he's just like chucked the whole time, and yeah. he was like, he said he was like scared of him on the set because oh he, he really thought he was like going nuts. Oh my god! Yeah. Well, he, I mean, he was amazing. I'm surprised that he hasn't gotten any kind of cred for anything in terms like a nomination or something like I that. I hope because this he does. Absolutely, has deserved one from the beginning. Yeah, he's fantastic. We need to talk about this scene in the boardroom, and we will. Yeah, skipped over it. We didn't skip over it. It's right totally here. Totally skipped over. No, we didn't. We here, talked we're, about. We're it. jumping around though. All right, so preceding... You're the one that was skipping ahead, and now you don't no, want to skip you ahead. Put, you, you mentioned the shots. The whole point you of You mentioned this... in the shots in the boardroom, and then you went right to the end when he has a ma- breakdown. No, because we were talking about the Kubrick shots, and now the, especially in the mansion. And then but it now went we to a Kubrickian kind of thing that Oxnard wanted to bring up with the house. Boardroom. Yes, boss. What would you like to yeah, bring up about, about the board? <laughs> oh, you're too busy talking about the show. I'm, I'm, I'm the the wrangler. I'm not gonna. Do <laughs> what have you oh, wrangled? No, nothing, <laughs> what have you wrangled? You're wrangling my balls right now. <laughs> Start talking. Yeah. All what right. do you want to say? Well, he's uh, he puts Wrong. his hand out. <laughs> puts his hand out to Howard, and he asks everybody to leave, and he tells him how much he's helped him over the years. Seventeen years. He's helped him. All right, you're missing the big point of that scene is that Howard is taking personal money of his plus loans. Well, I didn't get there yet. You're jumping ahead. Oh, <laughs> oh excuse me. It Flip seemed like you were done. You were leaning back. He's turning it around on us. <laughs> he did seem done. He did lean away from the mic. All right. It was a dramatic pause. All right. Basically, like that was. You oh, broke it. You blew it. Howard's going to do that. Howard offers Jimmy basically a plate. He has nowhere to go. Chuck thought he had this place to go so that he can keep this going, but Chuck Howard's like, "Look, I'm done. I yeah. am done. Fuck you. I'm using my own money. You're not going to bother HHM. Just fuck off. Do whatever." Yeah. He took out loans and he gave his own money. See, and I, yes. you know what? I think Howard too. He was like, "You know what? This is going to, this is going to eat Chuck up too." That I did this. Yeah, and I thought a similar thing was going to happen with Kim. I thought like both of the uh, McGill brothers were going to push away these two people who are like their go-to people. Jimmy with Kim and Chuck with Howard. And Howard, you know, he's the one who he's had it. But Kim, it's like they got closer. Mm. So it's going to make it even harsher in season four when you find out what happens to Kim and why she's not in Breaking Bad. Something bad has to happen. Hey, how about Kim in pajama pants? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just a little, little segue here. Is there anything better the broken than... broken arm only makes it hotter. Anything better than girls in pajama pants? Yeah. Doesn't that just shout out cozy fuck time? Huh? <laughs> right? <laughs> That's why I love going to all those college classes and all those girls just slobbing around yeah. in their pajama pants <laughs> and slippers to class. Is that what they do? Did you ever see? You never went? Even when I commuted to school, you'd go oh, to school yeah. and like, uh, and girls would show up in uh, pajama pants and slippers. I took a like, bunch of art classes. Wear this outside. <laughs> I was you're with gonna girls. Go you're gonna get in a bed with that on now? It's disgusting. Uh, I was with girls that had like weird leather things and amazing. What? Tricolored. I was in the art student. You so went to bondage school. Tricolored hair. A lot of alt. He majored weirdos. in submissiveness. Girls that didn't shower or shave. It's a wild scene, man. It's very bohemian. <laughs> <laughs> Painting class, man. Oh man, community college in Indiana. Yeah, I remember that one of the, it was weird. One new drawing classes, like one of the female students in the class, just she said, posed. Yeah, like it was nothing. I was just this is weird. <laughs> I was she was doing it. Good, well, now wait. <laughs> well, all right. Now let's get superficial. Uh, how attractive was she? Uh, I mean, it's, <laughs> it not was attractive at all. There's or no, he's so uncomfortable because he had a boner the whole time. Here's the thing about <laughs> his hand is shaking with as new he's drawing, drawing nipples. There was no sexual aspect to nude drawing. Oh, no, no. And it was very... No, but there is a shock when the girl you're sitting next to <laughs> decides, I'm going to do this. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, it, it, it happened oh, and then you just... Re- would be, even in, a, even in a life drawing class. And then you re- it just got normal. Art, art school is weird. Yeah, but, but our programs answer my school. question. Was she was like it? a big, gross, fat body or was she disgusting? Uh, she you know, wasn't... Or was she nice looking? 
She wasn't too she nice looking. Big, she wasn't like grotesque, like run away. Look, it wasn't I'm, like uh, <laughs> it wasn't like what's that fat character from uh, Austin Powers? Yeah, it was fat bastard, a fat female bastard. fat bastard. Yeah, there you go. Look, I don't want to shame anybody. I have a comment about. No, uh, I don't. I'm sorry. I don't want to be mean. But Kim in pajama pants, fat bodies. Then all more power to you. When Saul uh, makes her breakfast. I, I always look into the food details in TV and movies. What's on the toast? Interested in that. I, Nothing. If I have one dry hand, toast. If I have one hand to eat, I'm not cutting my sausage with a fork. I'm just using my just, hand, man. There was eggs. Utensils. No, she does eat a sausage first. Also, I'm just you know piling what I do? those eggs but, onto that bread, putting the sausage on it, with, using hmm. my hands, crumpling it up, stuffing it in my mouth with breakfast sausage. So you'd like be that. good, boss, because you're left-handed. Oh, see, that's why it's so easy. Does that matter? Because he's a freak. <laughs> no, yeah, if you're, if you're left-handed, you can use your left hand better. Hello? Oh, because <laughs> she broke her she right broke arm. Her I, yeah. I was just thinking about somebody with one arm broken. I, I can use my left hand so I don't understand what the big deal is. Um, <laughs> but with breakfast sausages, you don't even have to cut them. Just stick, stick it on your hand. fork. Or just stick on your fork and just eat it. <laughs> like, take bites off of it from there. Maybe mm. she didn't want to do the phallic... Right, maybe they did. Oh, it. Fucking, maybe they didn't take like that. How yeah. is she gonna eat it? Let's go. Oh, like, Jimmy, no, no, oh. don't pick up that Jimmy. whole sausage. Oh, Jimmy, your sausage is Do so not, hot. so no. hot. Cut. I'm gonna put don't one in my mouth and the for, sausage for some reason. as a whole and put it in your mouth. That's phallic. They're gonna, they're gonna be. It's me, Elliot. Thrown Gold. off the entire point of this whole scene. You will. Yeah, that's right. Mash shit in your mouth. I'm gonna hold one sausage while putting the other in my mouth. Would have been too distracting if she did that. Yes, it would have. It would have. <laughs> All right. All right. Oh, Kim is an excellent now character. That we've offended, no disrespect. Now that we've offended many people. Who's the actor who plays Kim? Including me. Oh, Rhea Seahorn or something? Yeah, yeah. Rhea Seahorn, excellent character. Should also well, that's win the something. Real Props. She's the real person. She's, she's a character. Not the char- well, she's a character. Yeah, she's, she's, a real, hey. she's a real card. Life's a stage. <laughs> Life's you a stage. Are a card. Life's a stage? That's right. Life's a stage? That's right. All right. So, so the Salamanca crew goes to the upholstery <laughs> upholstery uh, shop to see uh, Ooh, they got Nacho's egg, daddy. They got Econdesos there. Big, big Nacho <laughs> Supreme. Take it away, Oxnard. <laughs> well, Salamanca <laughs> looks set up. Salamanca looks excited in a rare yeah. happy mood. He's talking to people. He's smiling. He Donde meet... está tu papa? Yeah, he wants to meet Poppy. I think he wants to make a nice, uh, you know, friend of a like age. He's thinking yes. he's going to hit it off with this yeah. uh, Varga, ah. Varga dad. Why don't we go outside and whistle at cute girls? Ah. Yeah. That's what we do at this age. It's <laughs> 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 like the exact sound he makes. First, I will like... eat your soul. <laughs> now, I was waiting for um, something to hint at the ding, 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 a bell. Oh, I thought it would have been... I thought yeah, it would have been, been awesome good. if when they walked yeah. into the shop, maybe they come through the front door. There and there is a is, bell there, There too. is a call bell, and you see Salamanca, like, hit the bell or something. I thought they could have... Yeah, there is a bell yeah, right there. Bell. Ooh, it's a cool orange color. Yeah. I want that bell. Oh, man. Let's get it. Man, I love the actor that plays uh, Nacho's dad. The guy <laughs> gives, like, such an understated performance. It's perfect. He's really good, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's fucking excellent. The tertiary characters on the show are, like, better than... Primary then characters, the non-tertiary, on other yeah. shows. <laughs> then the untertiary. So he does a huge thing, and Salamanca uh, changes Salamanca his mind. Shits a little bit. Oh uh, yeah. So mad. Get, says, out, get, of out, of get out of my store. Get out of my store. Face like, oh my god, your whole family, ten <laughs> generations are dead. <laughs> what? what uh, Nacho's like, think of Aunt So and So uh, and your nieces and whatever, yeah. and the twins or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, Nacho. You're giving Salamanca information yes. about people to kill. Salamanca will oh, get that I information. I didn't realize that there was an ad. Queens. Queens. Anyway. So the dad finally like is like, all right, I'll take the money. I clearly have no fucking choice. Right. And Salamanca is like, I'm fucking out. I'm out of here. I'm leaving. Seacrest. <laughs> and uh, I spit on the microphone. And uh, 
And then he's basically, Nacho's like, don't worry, he'll come around. You know, I promise he's going to come around. I'll handle him, blah, 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 blah. And mm. Solomon goes like, I don't trust him. Don't yeah, so he's fucked. To him. Yeah. He's fucked. And Nacho knows it. And that's why, cut to, Nacho is going to sneak up on Salamanca yeah. and fucking... Shoot him! In so the apparently, back of a noodle. the he- other henchman had set out like a call to the other henchman yeah, I guess that I guess Nacho, Nacho just didn't get. Or yes. he might have just been ignoring his phone too, it was just because he's so he was zoned there. in. Yeah, that all was right. crazy. He's like, all right, you got my message. That is crazy. And I was one. waiting for me like so. You know, they were gonna ask Nacho right. some questions about uh-huh. what they were doing, and he's gonna be like, yeah, well, you know, it's like you said in the message. You know, let's go for it. <laughs> yeah, I'm all in. And all right. you know, and then he was gonna have to like pass some test. But then, uh, for, now this is what was confusing me too about what we just mentioned here, like this message that apparently was left for Nacho. Uh-huh. Then Salamanca comes out and he says, "You know, Fring's on his way. They're here." Hmm. And Fring pulls up with uh, his partner, the other Don, representative seen, of Eliando. Yeah, that we right, and we've seen him in the flashbacks. Right. We saw him in flashback this season where he brings. The money from Fring and says, oh, Fring wishes he could be there. And uh, Eladio's like, no, let him keep working. He's <laughs> giving me beautiful money here and nice cubes. The most beautiful money cube I've ever people. seen. <laughs> cube money. Do you see this money? I want my money like El this. Delicioso, corosa, marriba, rolo, <laughs> Muy delicioso. You said that guy was Cuban? I think he is. Was he? <laughs> well, I don't know. He, he did play a Cuban in Scarface. Who didn't? <laughs> <laughs> Al Pacino. Cockroaches! Cockroach! But you want to be like a cheap? Do you want to be like a cheap man? You know who was the best? Fuck the Menendez brothers! You know who was Menendez the brothers. Men- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, the best, the two best Cubans, non-Cubans in that movie, were uh, Robert Loja. The, he's the colonel from uh, Independence Day. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. The guy gets shot, bizarre. right? Yeah. He's, he's the one you want to be like a cockroach! Yeah. Um... And he's like, yeah, no, see, see. And then the other one was uh, F. Murray Abraham. <laughs> Who's that? He's uh, Salieri. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, he's uh, you know Academy Award winning snooty <laughs> actor who couldn't be more non-Cuban. <laughs> <laughs> Non-Hispanic. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, anyway. I, I hate know, Mozart. Hilarious. But uh, the guy who plays Don Eladio, is that his name? He's um, he play, he's in Scarface also. He falls in love with, like, Tony's sister or whatever. Anyway. Wait, that's the guy? The young guy? Yeah, the young guy. Yeah, that's, that's him. him? Yeah, that's him. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. I never made that connection. <laughs> wow, here I am thinking, wow, this is another pointless Dexter yarn no. <laughs> that he spun. And then uh, I just Cause he's on this, his mind. He's on this other show my mom used to watch called Something USA. It was a PBS show about a Cuban family. Like a novella or something? Tele-novella? It was like a TV comedy sitcom, mm-hmm. but it was like catered purely to Cuban immigrants at the time. It was uh-huh. like in the 70s. Yeah. And he was on that show. That was the first thing he did. He's like a teenager. And then yeah, after that, he did scarf. That's hilarious. Wow, yeah. he gained a lot of weight. <laughs> yeah, man. It's all that delicious Cuban food. <laughs> all right. Yeah, so, wait, well, hold on. I want to look it up because I want to confirm it now. Because now I just got No, it looks like excited. him when I'm looking it's at it. It's got to be him. Um, all right, keep going. I got to pee. All right, hold on. I'm just looking this up real quick. That's him. Yep. Manny. Manny Ribera. Look up Town USA or look up his earliest work. That's what it is. All right. Seems young for a Don. He's 60. He just looks fantastic. That's all. <laughs> That's he's not problem. young at all. He's just incredible looking for his age. He's been in a lot of stuff. He's been around for a long time. One day at a time? One day or no? It was a PBS something. Que Pasa USA. Yeah, that's it. He was Rocky Echeverria. <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. He's so young looking in this. In the Pena household, language barriers arise, cultures clash, and hilarity ensues. Que pasa USA, yeah. Hey, it's got a high rating on uh, IMDb. Yeah, because it was... nine out of ten. My mom watched that when she was a kid. It, I, I'm telling you, it just catered to Cubans who just, like, recently got here. Just like Trump just did. We did will, <laughs> We will crush Cuba. Is that what he's, no, I can't he's follow politics, like, man. It, it makes me go he was insane. Completely undoing all the Obama stuff he was saying. He's going to undo all that, uh, what, whatever Obama did with Cuba. And then, uh, but he gave like a 50 minute speech all about <laughs> the horrors of uh, Cuban authoritarianism. 
But then, uh, you know, North Korea's like, yeah, I'd meet with uh, I'd meet with Kim Jong Un <laughs> during the campaign. He yeah. said that, and then uh, he also like congratulated um, the president of Turkey, who is another guy who is like consolidating power and uh, election kind of you know questionable mm-hmm. election practices. And then his all his, his goons just started beating women and men that were protesting. American citizens that were protesting. That's good. Yeah. It's graphic. I mean, it's brutal. Like when you Is see the world videos. over yet? Just one just I'm like just waiting for the world. It's getting this there. Woman we're almost death. done, people. Can you guys just text me, hey, Oxnard, the world. It's over. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, Oxnard, that's it. <laughs> yeah. All right. I just want to be aware. I'm still going to be, you know, editing videos and stuff. Yeah. I just want to know when it happens. I'll just, I'll just send you a text. It just says, <laughs> done. And a thumbs up emoji. Okay, and that's how you know. I mean, you know, is he getting man. impeached soon? <laughs> is oh, pro- that he's happening? Gotta soon? Be. He's got to be. No. I don't know. It's got to be. Every time I get an alert on my yeah. phone, I'm like, "This is it." <laughs> See, I I took it's off bre- all breaking news. I'm like, "What is it?" I don't have Twitter on my phone anymore. I don't have uh, any news things on my phones. It's just like. Uh, messaging and just little goofy apps because I can't have it once a week. Oh, too yeah. avail- I can't oh, have I get, it too available. I get yeah. um, it stresses through, me out. Through my work, I get it's, free subscriptions to the New York Times and the Washington Post, and so I uh, I get to read those. Like I have online subscriptions, so then I get updates on my phone hmm. and then like Politico and all kinds of stuff. The New Yorker, I got a free subscription to the New Yorker for a while. That was good. <laughs> oh, too much <laughs> news, man. <laughs> One. No. <laughs> oh man, you gotta uh, read it all. Do you look at even, at least the good news section? There is no good news section, man. There is on Wake MSN.com. Up. And there's a website. That's not it's, all, news. it's all good news. Great. Like puppies His were adopted. Name is Nutty yeah. the squirrel. You yeah, like a, a cat was saved by doing a surgery for free. Yeah. Guy saw cat did the surgery for free. Yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you, it's all it's not real news, but it's happy news. <laughs> what were we talking about before we started getting into the the guy, uh, Don Eladio? Elandio. Anyway, Elandio. oh, uh, so Fring and the other guy shows up, and um, they're basically like, "Look, Salamanca, it's nothing personal. This is how the Don wants it, and that's just how it's got to be. It's the one path. It's better for everybody. It's more efficient. It's safer. It raises less eyebrows." It, mm-hmm. Don't take it personally. And he just starts flipping out. Yeah. Salamanca blood. Salamanca this. Yeah. Oh, Salamanca but, uh, that. Salamanca taco. Salamanca. And uh, and then he has a conniption fit there. Yep. And um, oh, Lord. oh, and and then that's when the the pills don't work. All right. right. And he collapses. Me so pills. Now there's, there's well, the pills haven't been working. There's two things. For, before we took a break, there. I was yes and ask, no. Huh. What? The spring? Just two things I want to ask. I said yes and no. What's the first oh. thing? Uh, so the first thing was we were talking about Nacho got that m- apparently was given a message to meet up there, mm-hmm. right? Um, but how did? He, uh, oh, never mind. I think I answered. I was gonna say like, how did he not know already that this was going on? And they were like surprised to see him. They're like, maybe oh, good, he didn't, Nacho's maybe he didn't here. Take his phone because it's got GPS or something. I don't know, because I was like, this is like a really big deal that Fring is here. That's probably... Nacho's like the top dog in this crew. Well, wait, they don't have, he? like, smartphones. Never mind. I don't know what I'm talking about. The GPS. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they have that. Like, yeah. They can't track you? Prob- they have some old well, phones? the out. government can probably do that, but not, like, these <laughs> yeah. these goons in a cartel. It's just like, the cartel is, like, four guys. Yeah, basically <laughs> it's Salamanca, really Nacho, and guys. these two other goons. Yeah. Four guys in a chihuahua. Yeah. <laughs> The new I mean, sitcom. That's it. That's it. Um, so, all right. So that was. I was just surprised that like this is a major meeting that's going on, and Nacho, like I guess, Stumbles. I felt like he wasn't really informed. Yeah, he just kind of nachos his up way in there. Hmm. Uh, the other thing was, I was shocked that Fring is giving him CPR. Mm-hmm. Makes perfect sense, though. It does. I guess he wants him to suffer. Wants him to, yeah. It's not time for you to die uh, yet, yeah, asshole. Yeah. Like, he wants to exact his revenge. He yeah. wants to completely and thoroughly trounce the guy. He would have done it if not for that Brian Cranston dude. He could guy. have pretended to be giving him CPR, but he's actually just choking him. Yeah. Could have pretended there. Don't die, me, cabron. Oh, yeah, that was insane. Now, the only thing I was confused by is that uh, Gus Frank sends away that other guy. But it's the okay. other two guys leave, too. But it's okay for Gus to be seen there? Because he's uh He's a chicken man. Oh, that's true, though. Citizen. But why would he be there? Why not? Why? No is one's he... questioning why any of them are there? 
Well, I guess it's Salamanca. It's like a place of business, I guess, technically. Like, yeah. they run it, so it's like, oh, yeah, I mean, we know we're we're pals. So, uh, he owns the place. We were here hanging out. He started to have this problem. And they're meeting at the taco place? I think they were meeting somewhere else. I thought I, I thought Nacho was going to try and shoot him from, like, the cover of, like, a... Basically, like a chassis, a car chassis. Well, he was Not trying like to he's trying to gauge the shot. He wants to make sure the shot is quick, and then he can get the hell out of there. The further away he can do it, the better. Yeah, should have done what Mike does. Just bring a sniper rifle, hit him from like a great. kilometer away. Um, yeah, he got to pick up the pills. Oh man! That, oh yeah, see, wrapped that up perfectly. We're thinking like, how the fuck is he going to pull that off? Lucky Good. spot of luck. And he, I guess he had the other pills ready to go yeah. to hand over. That was another spot of yeah, luck. yeah, definitely. Oh, but man. what's not a spot of luck is the look that Gus Fring gives him. Yeah. Because Gus knows that, uh, did this motherfucker just try and take away my chance of revenge against mm-hmm. Salamanca? Yeah, but how could he be mad at him because he doesn't know the other reasons? Do you think Gus is really like, that well, seems more of like an well, irrational thing, though. Gus but this is insane. ties into... I think, Gus I think is insane. That pi- oh, yeah, that pisses him off. Oh, I think Gus, no, is, Gus is completely isn't... sane. Gus is... In- no way. Yeah, he's sane. He's just, he's, just uh, a, he's a special kind of, of sinister. Because he's not, <laughs> yes. he's not a, like over the top. So, like you guys Tuco, see Breaking Bad. Tuco yeah, but, is insane. Yes, no, but, but Tuco's insane. Hold on. That clip I showed you, remember uh, two weeks ago, when Jimmy's saying like, did Ignacio send you? Nacho. No, no. He said, uh, he said it wasn't me. It was Ignacio. Ignacio yeah, implying Ignacio that... is still alive in Breaking Bad. Ignacio is right. Nacho's real name. Ignacio Vargas. See now, actually, but I because uh, we talked about this. I think last time, mm-hmm. also, you're right, but I see, I think he could be dead still, because in all, I didn't do it, it was Ignacio, but Ignacio's already dead, maybe. I'm thinking He's Gus... Just, it could go either way to me. I think Gus is going to try and get Nacho involved with his operation, yeah. and maybe just send him away somewhere. See, I think, I always thought, leading up to that finale, that, uh, and this was just all in my own head here, that, uh... Nacho and Fring had a kind of like knowing nod kind of relationship like where Nacho's like sorry, you know, this guy's nuts. You know what I mean? I, like I'm, I bet there was a Gus kind can of pick like, up on that. Like Gus and Fring cuz they they do Nacho would look at him a certain way, not in the way that the same way that that weird ponytail guy looks, you know what I mean, where he's like trying to look all badass. Nacho has like <laughs> sympathetic eyes. He has very uh telling eyes. You in love with Nacho? Oh, sure. Oh, the actor it was funny. <laughs> Guess where that actor's so from? Cool. M- Mexico. He was born in Quebec. <laughs> what? Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> it's hilarious. Wait, did he live there at all? Did he grow up there at all? I think he grew up in Quebec and moved. This is like his did, first... So he speaks... He must speak that version of French. I think so. I think this is like his first role, I believe. Or he was in other little stuff, but this is his first like major thing. And he was telling a story how Vince Gilligan, after he did his... Um, What's it called when you try out? Audition. <laughs> Vince Gilligan. Oh, <laughs> uh, what's so, it called? I'm trying out. Uh, Vince Gilligan put his hand on his back as he was leaving. <laughs> and he, he just rubbed it gently. No, he just put his hand on his back. But he didn't Don't say know. anything. Yeah. And so he was like, I don't know if that meant like, I choose you or like, oh, I wish you did better. And he was thinking about that for oh, months and then they oh called him back. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. Wait, hold on. I have to look this up. Yeah, look him up. And then we got to talk about Blockbuster. Oh, look at this. The description is really funny. Uh, Michael Mondo, Mando, Mondo, stars in the, on the AMC mega hit Better Call Saul. He plays Nacho Varga, a highly intelligent and multi-layered gangster who <laughs> disagrees with the short-sighted methods of the Salamanca cartel. This is, this is a funny... Oh, he's an orphan black? A show that I... I want to watch. It's supposed to be really good. Hmm. He started in 2013. He oh 2012. Yeah, he's had roles. This yeah, is I'm probably sure. like the biggest role though. Yeah, I, I might have just said that wrong. Wrong again. As usual. Wrong again. No, no. Uh, he hasn't been in a lot of stuff. I mean, compared to the thing, he's in the new Spider-Man. I think he's awesome. That's hilarious, though. All right, so. Salamanca has a stroke. Here's a twist they could do, though. What? Just kidding. Next season, they could do a twist where he comes back feeling better than ever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I'm as strong as an ox. They gave me pacemaker. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, you gotta... I got the new heart. You gotta see Silicon Valley. 
there's a part <laughs> there's a <laughs> the guy <laughs> it's a thing that the rich people do in that show yeah. this one guy does he gets a uh, blood transfusions from from young aryan boys <laughs> or and it keeps it's supposed to keep him like super healthy oh my god it's you funny. know what's funny is the guy who's like the google type ceo that's the guy who gets it uh, uh Hooli. oh that's the guy who wrote and directed captain fantastic yeah you told me that yeah. um it blew my mind yeah, Captain Fantastic. I if saw you it. It was seen that uh, movie. Watch it. It's incredible. I loved it. Boss, you it was like good. It? <laughs> I, I stopped at the, the what? screen with it. I was like, <sighs> you stopped. I was like, how what? good could this be? So you didn't watch it? No. Oh. <laughs> I thought it was good. I mean, yeah, I, I loved it. I don't know. I was like, no, it was good. It's it a, was one of the better movies I've seen in quite a while. Yeah, go see it. This is an interesting take. On you know what it was? It something. was like it just affected me in a kind of way you know what i mean where i just was like wow what am i doing with my life you want to live in the woods no but uh i could not survive in the woods but at the same time i have access to basically anything i want and what do i do i sit on my ass and with you fuckers what is going on about here? better call saul <laughs> see you later i'm off to the pacific northwest to probably get mauled by a grizzly bear <laughs> <laughs> it's in the papers. Uh, Local guy, no, Dexter. I, you know, it's like one of those things that make, makes you, like, self-evaluate a little bit. And it kind of makes you appreciate the things that you do have. You are you know, whatever. This is getting depressing. Yeah, it was a good movie. Uh, moving yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Kim... Cut all that out. Kim is, you know, she's resting up and she's going to start working. Francesca's there. Mm. Uh, she's going to go... Start getting back into Miss of Earl Day and uh, her other operations as usual. But then she's like, fuck it. Fuck it, man. Blockbuster, Blockbuster baby. party. And they go nuts. Um, Let's go nuts. I'm going to watch fucking To Kill a Mockingbird. I'm three sure. The, times. I think the inventor watches he's in Scotland. Uh, what's the equivalent of a Blockbuster over there in the UK, Scotland? Yeah, what's the Do you have blockbusters? What's the equivalent of the... Uh, Do you know what a blockbuster what's is? What's Scotland's version of the uh, video store that went out of business and doesn't exist anymore? Mm-hmm. Now, I worked at a West Coast video. You remember those? Mm-hmm. You've they took over stories. for Super Video. Do you remember it's, those? It's, Ach, movies! That's what it's called. Ball bag films! <laughs> Get your arse in here! Watch some films! Movies! They ban Braveheart. <laughs> the accent's terrible! <laughs> the fuck was Mel Gibson thinking? They cannot take our movies! <laughs> Mel Gibson said that take, that's a cultural here. appropriation! I have to grimace horribly to do that accent. William Moss called 50 men. I can crush you. 50. Like a worm. Like a worm. Let's watch the film. Um... Ooh. Great score. Say what you want about Mel Gibson, but damn it, the man knows story structure. <laughs> I love Braveheart. Sorry, the inventor. Sorry, yeah, but you got... <laughs> anyone who doesn't uh, like it, I guess. I don't watch it. I don't expect it to be historically <laughs> accurate. I don't think. What are you defending? <laughs> no one's. No I one's love said... a Braveheart. <laughs> yeah, no, but no one's attacking me. No one has Always said defending anything. Himself. Oh. Man, <laughs> calm down, man. No one Look, said anything. I live yeah. in fear, constant fear yeah. of being judged. I'm a very insecure person. Yes. <laughs> I like cheese. Now, hold on. <laughs> Wait, don't take that the wrong no, way. There are a lot of people. How could I take that the wrong way? Um, Is this free range cheese? Uh, what was I going to Oh, I was going to say uh, you can love the arts. Doesn't mean you have to love the artist. Oh, see, now that's an interesting thing. I think we had talked about that because Stephen Fry talked about he loves Wagner, but Wagner is a raging anti Semite. Yeah, as Hitler's most people favorite, were at that time. His yeah. favorite composer? Yeah. Yeah, but nobody says that about Mozart. I'm sure Tolkien Mozart's had some intense hatred of the Jews. <laughs> I'm sure like a Tolkien had something weird that we're not learning about yet. <laughs> oh, well, he was born in South Africa, so I don't know. That's true. I feel like Tolkien loved everyone except mm, his publishers. He just waits. Except all of his fans. The bombshell's coming. Oh, man. What's the date I told you? Was Tolkien the most racist person who <laughs> ever lived? In what uh, literary critics are calling the most shocking events ever discovered in the literary community, Tolkien... Tolkien, Tolkien's secret Nazi Hobbit fan manuscript. Fiction. <laughs> his Hitler shipping literature. <laughs> Mussolini and Hitler together. Tolkien wrote a vast history on this. 
Tolkien once sent Adolf Hitler a letter just with a picture of a thumbs up on it. <laughs> he was creating emojis before they were even invented. The original emoji. Literary scholars are now deciding whether or not the theory of emojis should be changed. He was praising Stalin's horrible ideals <laughs> in, in a letter written completely in Elvish. <laughs> I forgot what Those the fuck horrible I was ideals. Say. I don't know, I couldn't think of anything to say. <laughs> it sounds so awkward. All right. I have a five-year plan filled with ideals. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, <laughs> what, are, what do we need to talk about next? I guess the Chuck ending. Chuck burns himself down, maybe. Again, to your uh, Elliot Gould uh, comment. Elliot Gould, yes. Um, <laughs> Elliot you know, Gould. I think it's kind of... Uh, I don't know that they... I don't think they cheated the audience again. Because they could have easily done a thing where the fucking canteen falls falls over. I mean... Uh, do you think boss, he's dead? I know we're jumping ahead. You don't like that. Or do you? I don't know. I'm confused. Hey, Ken, it's the end. Okay. Um, Wrap it up! <laughs> <laughs> um, Chuck has gone crazy. We talked about it before. The house is like, been torn to shreds. There's newspapers, books everywhere. Flammable materials... All over the place. Man, I forget. Chuck's got his lanterns going again. Peter Gold said he based that scene on a scene. Who plays Wolverine? Uh, Hugh Jackman. No, maybe not Hugh. Well, it's some. I forget the name of the movie, but it's a movie. The guy's going crazy, lo- bashing his house apart, trying to find a bug. Fuck. I completely oh. forgot about oh, it. No, I don't know. I was saying. Th- <laughs> oh! <laughs> you know, no, I don't know. You know Something happened? house? A bug's when life? You, when you said that, it, when you said that, it triggered. Memory of Mike taking about the car, but that has nothing to do with the house. Um, That's another example of dismantling to find like a little thing. Wait, uh, well, in in Breaking Bad, Mike goes through a house and finds a bug. Also, right? Walter tries to kill bug? that fly. Does he? Oh, a bug? You mean? Uh, yeah, wait, do you I mean an actual? Bug? Hung... <laughs> I'm thinking, no, am I no, an no, idiot? No, no, like, an insect or a no, like a tracking, a surveillance thing. device. Or no, no, you know what? It's not a know. bug. It's he's hired to get rid of any evidence in a house. Well, the the other thing like, he said it what's was. What's uh, Did you find it? No, I can't Shit, find it's it. It's gonna drive me fucking crazy. We'll figure now. it out later. But also, uh, McKeon on Better Talks All. Was it Enemy <laughs> of the State? No. <laughs> With Will Smith? Oh, that enemy of the state. I yeah. thought you meant the one with uh, Shiloh LaBeouf. <laughs> What's that? No, that's Eagle Eye. What? No, I'm just making a joke. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what Fuck you! <laughs> All right, so the other thing that McKeon was saying is he also thought that scene was very reminiscent of a Ray Bradbury story called The Fruit of the Bottom of the Bowl, and it's about oh, this know. guy who murders someone, starts clearing his fingerprints of everything, but because he stays too long and he's kind of neurotic... He starts overly checking, and he starts scrubbing every surface, and he's there for hours, and the police arrive and find him there because he's scrubbing all the fruit, even at the bottom of the bowl, because his neuroticism just, that's what got him, that's Uh, what made him fall. My wife, um, over the weekend... (laughs) Went through that exact thing. (laughs) I was murdered. She's in the hospital now. (laughs) Um... No, she saw the 1984 on uh, the Broadway play that just came in the new play. They did a it's Olivia did Wilde a, is in it. I didn't know you could do a play of that. Well, it, it was jarring. She said, "Well, fuck yeah, the yeah, book and is I was awesome." Like, wow, I was like, and she didn't. I she uh, couldn't even remember if she read the book. She said she thinks she had. She thinks she had to read it in high school. But if she did, she didn't remember. She didn't remember it anyway. See, that's and the kind I of book. I just read it. I read it like a uh, few months ago. That's so a it was book all when fresh you fresh in my mind. When you read it, you remember it. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, "War is peace." I was like, "So get ready for a half hour of torture, <laughs> at least." What's the room number? Room. Oh God, I don't remember. One hundred. I just remember they were in the Ministry of Love. One hundred eight. Oh well, when, well the guy he's when Winston's sitting in that when he's first taken to the Ministry of Love and that one haggard Skeletor person comes in and they're like oh it's time to take you to room whatever he's like nah, nah. the whole I mean the book is incredible obviously if you haven't read the book you should read it because it's really just an amazing yeah and with the NSA stuff and, and smartphones uh, there are and insane everything. parallels no, we're um, heading there especially. In today's political climate, but even without that, it's there are other parallels, and it's really just 
in- incredible. Actually, what I've heard but is that the we've half, become last half of the book is disturbing. Yeah. It's in it's an intense intense book, and she said that there was like it was you were really uncomfortable the entire time because the sounds that they use and the noise mm. was overwhelming, and it was like the performances were incredible. And she said it wasn't like wow, what a great play, but she was like it was a it was a great it was a and the experience was oh, yeah. incredible and it was very intense and the guy is like basically like pleading with the audience at one point like begging for help because hmm. you know at at the end of the book or towards the end um O'Brien is talking to Winston and Julia you don't know what's happened to her you assume the same thing is happening and it's like you're here's this box or something with your deepest most darkest fear that they finally confront you with and he's like you're gonna be eaten alive by rats basically and he starts fucking flipping out do they do the very very selling Julia out because the whole time he's like no I'll never let go of my love for Julia and then he finally does in that moment and like during the play she it was like she wanted to just reach out and like help him that's how like close you were to the whole thing and how How intense it? it was did she tell you how they ended it um, I the, think it was basically the, it was the same ending. It, he's it, in the cafe for, and he's drinking the gin. Yeah, basically and he's he like an old man. Her, yeah, and he right, and he loved he loved Big Brother. Uh, it's like the chilling last words of the book. <laughs> and, oh. um, no, but uh, yeah, it was. He sees her, they meet, and she, but she has like no idea who he is. She doesn't remember. Yeah. I think in the book that they they do remember though. They both remember, but they have like this different. They, they look changed. back on it differently. Yeah, they're, they're completely brains. different people. Brainwashed. Yeah. Um, but in the play, how she described it to me, it was that she basically had no idea who he was. Hmm. Um, Did she ever see Rocky the musical? <laughs> no. Which I actually Did would. Anybody? Yeah, I, a lot of people. I heard really? it was really, really good. Really? Because at the very end of the play, the stage opens up and the 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 ring comes out into the audience, and they invite you to go up around the ring. And there's a boxing match Whoa! going, and they want you to, because at the end of that play, you become part of the play, yeah. and you have to like shout and everything, and then like the guys are coming down, you can like scream at them and That's stuff. That's awesome. I heard it was really oh a lot God. of fun. But I only heard about it after it was had its run, but you know, in that in that Broadway play where it's, it was Larry, it was Larry <laughs> Bird, <laughs> it was Larry Bird and Magic Johnson. <laughs> the Larry Bird Boss, and where's the wrangling? At the end, at the end of ridiculous. at the end of the Larry Bird Magic Johnson play, you the audience audience is invited to become the basketball. <laughs> it just throws you around. <laughs> Fly through a hoop. Chuck burns to death. Right. So Chuck, possibly. <laughs> possibly. Dead. Be- now, why do you didn't... think possibly? Cuz I think it's definitely. No, I do think it's definitely, but but we don't know for sure. He probably and, have, um, I think alarms and in house. I think we will see Chuck again, but not but you know, you can go cuz they have the ability to go back in time or something. You know what I mean? Flashbacks and things like that. Uh that's like true. we saw where where their children, you know what I mean? They're, and when uh, Chuck is uh, Chuck's ex wife is coming to visit, and Jimmy's there um, in the episodes leading up to his trial. We remember that, right? And uh, but um, basically, Chuck is purposely nothing is confirmed. But I, I'm I feel confident that he's dead. I feel he's confident he's dead just because at the very end they put a suicide crisis hotline prevention. At the very end of the episode. <laughs> really? Which to me implies like this guy just killed himself. Chuck has put himself in this position on his own, especially with Jimmy saying, I don't, I never really cared about you. He's just isolated himself completely. He's yeah. canceled his appointment with a therapist. Um, he's, he's, uh, he's not only left the firm, but he's made essentially like the person he's closest with there absolutely detest him. Mm-hmm. Right. He set up this situation where, like, no one's going to find him or be around him. him. No for, one like, cares about him anymore. For, like, a week or right. two at least. No one's going to come bring him his groceries, and no one's going to come bring him his papers, and no one's going to come do this and that for him. Now, based on the beard he, he had nothing. at the final <laughs> scene when he's kicking, how many days has he been there just... Uh, I don't know. It could be, like, a couple of days. I was saying, like, two or three days yeah. just wallowing in his own Every- madness. It's hard to tell with stubble like that because everybody's beard grows indifferently. Right now, I shaved recently, and this is uh, this is two days of stubble. Right? Okay, I haven't shaved in and a few it's days. Not, it doesn't look like that much, but my beard grows in slowly. <laughs> okay, so there you have it. So, what about Chuck? <laughs> you, on the other hand, you grow a full beard every other day. 
No, no, it's just dark hair, so it's just more noticeable. When you shave your face, you start at the eyes. Let's and see his down. beard. Zoom to it does kind of go yeah. up here. All right, so... I wish I could grow a nice, thick beard, but at the same time, <laughs> I feel like I'd have to shave Just look at Boz's face occasionally. He's just like... <laughs> he, gave <a> stink. <laughs> he gave you a stink eye. Um, the other thing I was going to say is... Boss, uh, we're here talking. We're friends. We're hanging out. Okay, this is STS. It's called it's shooting for Zelda. It's called <laughs> shooting shit. the shit. Hold on, shooting the shit. Uh, I think the the writers and the you know the show preppers are uh, <laughs> aware of like people are looking at the clock when they're watching the show. This was an extra sixteen minute long episode. Oh. Yeah, this whole Chuck thing ended right around eleven o'clock, and I guarantee a lot of people were going like, "That's it. That's the only episode." Like, I guarantee they. So making this scene with the music and everything, I guarantee people were just like losing their minds yeah. along, just going like, "Is this how it's going to end? What's going on here?" That was just my little bit there. I thought that he was going to, like, breaking into the wall, he's going to hit, like, a live wire and electrocute himself. And now the I other- did think he was going to electrocute at, at, I thought he yeah. was going to start a fire when he knocked off the uh, meter. I thought he was going to get hurt there. Which is a felony, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah, that's not your property. You're not allowed to just go around bashing that up. And this made me so curious. I would love. I want to go out to my meters now and just see how quickly it's spinning. What was, what was it? <laughs> what? Did he ever find no, out no. what was causing it? To, oh no, he didn't no, because he, he knocked didn't. it off the wall. I was that was driving me crazy. I, the whole time I was like, "Your phone is connected. Your phone is connected. You're on the phone." Yeah, there's a tiny bit of electricity going through that phone yeah. wire. And uh, what could it have been? I don't know. Maybe, it, maybe it's driving it, me nuts no, now. But maybe hold on. Groundbreaking. You don't think I'm the would? first person that's ever thought about it. I think I don't think it was actually spinning. I think that was, it was all in his head. That's another thought I had. Ooh. Because he has nothing else to focus on. Yeah. This, what else is he going to do? Just sit around all day, like looking around. Well, well, the only thing he's going to well, he'd be sitting around and he th- he'd be having negative feelings about everything that's happened. This is how he. This this is why when he got divorced, he reverted to this. Anytime he feels something that's emotionally overwhelming to him, hmm. he reverts into this state, and that's what he focuses on. I would love to read like a like a psychiatrist do like an analysis of this and give their. I just did it. <laughs> Are you fucking listening? I need your degree. Where yeah. is it? Oh, I didn't go to school. All right. Uh, the other rumor I, I have heard. A third grade education. The other rumor I heard before this finale was that this could have been like a series finale. Yeah, we had talked about that. But uh, when once it was halfway through, I was like, okay, it definitely can't be because they would have to wrap up so much stuff, and Mike hasn't been seen at all. There really wasn't anything insane in this episode the most uh jarring and emotional things for me in this episode were chuck yeah were, were all the chuck scenes um other than that there wasn't any big <laughs> shock we knew something was going to happen with salamanca um you know what's weird i'm going to sound like a hypocrite because i remember i said this same thing in game of thrones for one of the finales when the misa finale I remember I said it was an Misa, ex- Misa Game of Thrones. <laughs> Misa, mother. Uh, I remember I said it was an excellent episode, but not an excellent season finale. Yeah. But to me, this is a good season finale. And like an oak. But not an excellent episode. <laughs> but and an excellent. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm just trying to cover my bases so people can't go back. Uh, hey, you said this, asshole. I'm going to fucking kill you. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, No, when I did, when it was over, I was like. You know, I think what happens is, though, we're accustomed to, like, season finale. It's going to be some shocking twist. I think that's like a it, walking uh, That's dead. a lost effect or, yeah, like a walking dead kind of thing. Or, like, there has to be some kind of massive cliffhanger. Mid-season there really, finale, there bro. It really doesn't have to be that. I mean, this was a really emotionally charged episode. Yeah. Like, And for me, especially just because of the Chuck stuff. So, um, and I'm telling you, when, as someone, I have terrible anxiety... What happens is you do focus on these things when when you mm-hmm. uh, I don't want to say I hate using the word triggered, but when it is like triggered, when it starts, it gets set it's off, exasperated. Yes, and <laughs> all of a sudden, like you feel like it's a it's a sense of control that he has. That's why he's doing it because you have control. That's why, like for me, all of a sudden I'll notice like oh this is messy over here. I have to clean this. Right. All of a sudden, like everything looks wrong. You're overwhelmed by clutter. That's what happens to me. And then, so for Chuck, this is a way of him gaining control. Right. That's why he does it, and it's just so extreme. How awesome would it have been if he's looking around his house and, like, he finds 
like gold, like a golden <laughs> chest or something. And he enters another realm and goes to Narnia. Oh my God! Secret Nazi gold. I'm Vince Gilligan, and this is the new crazy spinoff, <laughs> Chuck in Neverland. <laughs> AMC! And now it's all, and now it's all about how he becomes Captain Hook. Vince Gilligan appears at the end of the finale. It's a cold room. <laughs> he just sits down in a chair, staring at a camera. It's just yeah, explaining it's just it. It's like in a police interrogation room. It's just a cigarette burning, <laughs> hot light. That's the show. It's him telling you the story. I wonder what he does when you. it's uh, like a thunderstorm. Is that super Vince trigger Gilligan? him? No, Chuck. It's lightning. Oh my God! Yeah, the air is charged. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he has like a secret, like bunker? panic room. Yeah, I'm like surprised. A I'm surprised they never bunker. brought that up. Well, they're in they're New in the Mexico. Desert. Yeah, there's not. I no, but, they, but I mean, there are storms, but I don't think it's that often. It's funny because when we went to Las, I went to Las Vegas one time. It was I was there. Here we go. It was all rainy days. <laughs> yeah, right. Settle in for twenty musical. minutes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? You were in the rare there, time? Yeah, I was in like the rain week. <laughs> we have one week where it rains here, and then. It was crazy. LV. That's what we call it, people who live there. LV. You're not supposed to tell me anything. We're the killers. Now I'm from LV, and I'm singing my song, and (laughs) uh, we're the killers. And she's kissing someone else. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. That was a a Norm MacDonald thing where he's talking about, uh, you know, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. That doesn't apply to everything. You know, you can't kill somebody and leave, you know. But it's uh, <laughs> you can. Have, it means that the prostitutes are discreet. <laughs> anyway, look it up. I'm not going to do the whole bit. Right. Well, thank you, Dexter. All right. Well, thoughts really on the next fun. season, boss? What, what's going to be happening next season? Uh, Kim- Chuck's funeral. Maybe uh, you know a little after funeral. Coitus. Uh, <laughs> coitus. <laughs> huh? You know. And. Um, I don't know, man. This uh, more Kim in pajama pants. I, I would like to see more Mike stuff. With any stuff. luck, we need yeah, more, more Mike Kim stuff. Well, there's gonna pants. be more Mike stuff. There's gonna By be the more way, Frank saw stuff. The pajama pants had little uh, uh, dachshunds on it. So. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. oh, dachshund fan. to inspire wiener behavior. <laughs> oh, <laughs> while she eats that sauce. Vince, you've done it again. Oh, yes, <laughs> the subtle hints <laughs> at your deviance. That's what they say after that scene ends. Peter Gould's just like, Vince, you've done it again. They <laughs> shake hands and light cigars. With $100 bills. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's great to be king. King right. of the world. Did we discuss enough of Jimmy and Kim's relationship? Yeah, What's going yeah, on here? Definitely. Now, how do you feel about her dipping her cheese Doritos into a cheese sauce? I think she's a More wonderful woman. <laughs> I think I want to marry her. All right. Um... I've done that. I'm not ashamed to say it. <laughs> what else? <laughs> Do you want to think I've here? done... I, you know, I, I'm ashamed that you said it. Why? Well, you know what's good? Cheetos and uh, onion dip. Ooh. I've done that. Nutella and onion crackers? Yeah. Uh, I, I do potato chips and Nutella. Actually, like, yeah. Uh, and pita chips and Nutella. I go through so many Tabasco little bottles because I'll take individual Cheez-Its. Why don't you just get a big bottle then? Uh, Save your fucking money. Yeah, I guess I should. To, you know, they sell really Costco tiny ones and get too. A big fucking case of big bottles. But I pu- I'll put like one drop in a single cheese it and eat it. Then I'll take another cheese it, put one drop in a cheese it. No, but it. see, you did that. <laughs> this is, I remember we would go that I get like. food, and you know, you'd have like French fries or something, and you take his ketchup packet. That's how you eat French fries. Yeah, you squirt a little ketchup on each individual fry. <laughs> Why is that weird? <laughs> you're the only. One. I'm not saying it's weird, but you're the only one. That I've ever seen in my entire life eat. It makes perfect sense. Like you're equally distributing the ketchup for each fry. No, you're getting the exact flavor. I'm not flavor. saying you're wrong. Ah, you I know what I do? I think it's very interesting. Speaking of equal distribution. Uh, well, come on, it's Zelda time. If I, want pepper, <laughs> if I want pepper on my fries, I don't put it on the fries. I put it in the ketchup. Who's Some dipping yeah, you can do that. fries in the ketchup. Interesting. Boom, people. But life I'm, hack. I'm like a pepper fiend. I put it on the ketchup. I just put it everywhere. Pepper good for you? Has oh, to be, yeah. right? Yeah, I don't yeah. think it's bad for you. Good for the dachshund. <laughs> yeah, help the <laughs> dachshund out, man. Put some pepper on it. Inevitably, we've began discussing food. We almost made it the entire episode. We're so close, well, food right? In the episode. I know, but we were basically done, and then, and then I had to bring up that fucking cheesy chips. dip. 
I never thought about putting pepper in the ketchup, can I be honest? Although I'm not a big ketchup guy. I think that's why. I'm outside of the box. Because I don't always use ketchup. I, so I usually salt and pepper the fries themselves. Not a big ketchup so guy. I don't even know what that means. Salt and pepper. It all, it's all, it's all like bouncing a, I around. I always use ketchup. It's I think going 40%, off of the fries. 40% of my calories it's comes from ketchup. 40% of my body is ketchup. Strangely, <laughs> when you throw it in the ketchup, it sticks to the ketchup. Mix it up. Boom. Equal distribution. I love trying different kinds of ketchup. Heinz. I love all natural. Ones without corn syrup. <laughs> Okay, Tabasco, let's go. Yeah, sriracha ketchup. They have uh, Ooh, barbecue now, now ketchup. No, Tabasco no. ketchup. They have, but what it is, doesn't taste I just the same. Like ketchup, I like ketchup and mayo. That's good. You say, yeah, ketchup. I, fries and mayonnaise. Does that make me even whiter than I already thought I was? Just dipping French mm. fries and mayonnaise. You can go to no, Holland. You Belgium. You know what's Belgian. good <laughs> is you take ranch dressing <laughs> and you dump hot sauce in the ranch dressing and mix that up. I don't really like ranch. I like mayonnaise. <laughs> so the, that's that's America's number one dressing. I, uh, it doesn't, it always, I would wager I'm a vinegar a guess. guy. I never had oh, good ranch. I like oil and vinegar. I, I can be simple. Yeah. Like ranch is good. Vinegar. Ranch is nice. Every I'm time not a big I, blue cheese guy, but ranch. See, I love blue cheese. <laughs> You're sick. But no, uh, it's uh, weird. Just, if you get store bought blue cheese, and I guess store bought like ranch the chunks. But it always tastes like chunks a, is a gross. It word. always tastes like <laughs> chemicals to me. It tastes like what? Remember, Houlihan's had the best blue cheese. <laughs> But if you don't like the oh, yeah. chunks, they have just, nice honey mustard. Just y'all, oh, great honey mustard. I got their recipe. It's just basically mayonnaise, <laughs> yellow mustard, and, and honey. But it's mostly mayonnaise. That's why it's so good. Uh, there you have it. What else is good from chain restaurants? <laughs> I haven't been to Hulans. I remember in college we go to Hulans like once a week. Oh my god, I used to go there all the time. And it used to be cheap. Now you go yeah. there, it's like going to. Uh, I just get chicken fingers and fries and the honey mustard and oh. like three pints of Guinness, and you can smoke. <laughs> three you can smoke pints. There. <laughs> Three pints of Guinness to start with. <laughs> that's my appetizer. And that's what this was like early 2000s or whatever, so you could smoke still inside. When I mm-hmm. smoked, it was glorious. What a great day. Anyway, <laughs> hope you all enjoyed this. All right. So oh, that- yeah, that's it for Saul. We're not going to have any more Saul discussions. Yeah so, yeah, so Game of Thrones is going to be the next show we're probably going to be talking about. July... 17th? It's going to be exciting. Um, I heard that the final episode of that season is an hour and a half long. Yeah, I saw that in a text. Uh, Before our uh, Game of Thrones comes out, you may be getting additional content. That's as far as I'll go. I guess we... Well, no, we could announce a little something. Additional content? All right, well, I'll say this. Just say it. I'll say it. Uh, A while back, we had a special live D&D campaign that was on Twitch. 2015, I believe it was. I think it was 2015. The Scourge yeah. of the Bramble Downs. Oh, the Scourge. I'm just calling it the Bramble Downs. That's the short And I'm not going back, I'm not going back and changing <laughs> the, the work name. that I've done. AKA um, Bramble Downs. All right. I'll call it the Scourge in the next one I edit. No, just call it Bramble Downs. It's a short right. title. The Bramble Downs. Anyway. But the long title is it's the a can- the It's a special live Twitch D&D campaign that we did called the Bramble Downs, a.k.a. the Scourge of the Bramble Downs, all right? And um, we're working on that. That's going to be coming out very soon, and that's all leading up to something even more special. But there'll be many episodes Just leading up to that. more D&D. Yeah. Yes. All D&D. But, D&D um, crazy. Also, we have a new Twitch channel. Twitch has changed their entire format up. Finally, and thankfully. There's a lot of new things yeah. here. Because there was things that they're finally doing that now, back in 2015, we were doing the live d and I wish we could be doing stuff that they now allow. Yeah. But uh, we're putting up some Let's Plays that we're doing. I think we're going to put up our old D&D stuff on there. It's just going to be hosted new there. content, yeah. and there's going to be a lot of stuff going on on Twitch. It's called it's uh, twitch.tv slash SDS Enterprises. Yeah, and the reason I'm doing that, we're doing that, is because... Uh, in case anything happens with YouTube, because it's very volatile, mm. and like our channel gets taken down, we're still very small fries there. And Dude, some... what is going on? Well, there was it's a big a thing it's with advertisers. <laughs> no, there's a big thing with advertisers, or if you curse in a video, anything involving anything, the advertiser pull out people. Cock. Who... Fuck. Like I was uh, one guy I follow. He has like 70k subs, but he says for the past few months he's getting as much money as though. He had like 10k subs, oh. just because his content might include something that maybe is a little horrific, or he right. talks about something like that. It just seems stupid. <laughs> just because he has some horrific, content. <laughs> some <laughs> grossly <laughs> illegal <laughs> pornography, suddenly yeah. that's to be frowned upon. No, but I think uh, YouTube has always been 
They're love, weird. They've love always hates. been a little weird, yeah. And it's so Google. Anyway, it's, uh, so we're twitching it up. So, yeah, so look for content to go up on uh, twitch.tv slash STS Enterprises. Also, uh, Oxnard and I have Twitch channels still, twitch.tv slash STS Oxnard and slash STS Dexter. Occasionally we do stream on there uh, when we have a chance. And, um, yeah, so look... Within the the next few weeks, I think, for this special uh, yeah. Twitch D uh, D and D campaign that we did, videos the that content will be coming out, and I think you're gonna like it. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, some and of some listening to it, it's actually I was like, oh wow, this is actually a lot of fun. Some people have heard it when they were there, but you probably missed parts, and there was really no place to find it. So we're just playing. oh yeah, no, because Twitch after you stream something it. The video would be up there for like a few days or something. Yeah, and you have to and it was actually just save gone. It. Poof. Yeah. yeah, so we've delved into the STS archives to bring this to you. That's it. <laughs> Goodbye forever. No predictions for Saul? Me? No. I agree with boss uh, Chuck Funeral. Chuck uh, Funeral? And uh, more and uh, a real kind of downward spiral now for uh, <laughs> for Jimmy. All right, that was been a uh, that's been a great season. <laughs> that time, bud. Oh. Uh, too much rum. <laughs> See you later. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being beautiful. Stay lovely. Stay in school. I love you. Uh, yeah, you're all right. Dexter said it all. I've summed it up perfectly. No, don't be. Don't come on too strong, Dexter. No, uh, marry me. Uh. Uh, be with me forever. <laughs> Listen to uh, us, I guess. Stay with me. <laughs> hold me. Caress my hair. Goodbye. Goodbye.